I also wanted to talk to you about uh, what you think about whether or not uh, Ben is, is able to transcend these experiences by going through his art and whether or not uh, we have, we see the plays, we see everything else. What do you think? How do you think Ben compares to the other versions of Dan Schneider? Uh, I forget. There's Manny Cole. There's uh, the one from the kids book. Forget Henry uh, Matsumi. Yeah. Is that it? And then the, the Danny Wagner. How do you think he compares to the other versions of you? Well, you had said you thought this was the most like me. I would say there's not enough revealed about Ben to say that Danny Wagner has the most experience that we see. Um, this, he'd be probably number two next to Danny Wagner. Uh, Henry Matsumi is sort of an idealized other world version of Dan Schneider. Manny Cole is Dan Schneider gone wrong, but not serial killer wrong, just typical New York con man kind of wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, so uh, the character of Ben uh, is actually named after someone I know. There is a, a Ben Christensen. Um, but uh, I did, I, I chose that name because it's similar to, to Dan and Christensen is a Norwegian name. I'm half Norwegian. Um, and uh, I don't know if... Uh, I think the character of Ben plays things close to his vest. Yes, we we get the interior. We know that there's you know three or four uh, uh, female. One, one difference between him and Danny Wagner is he, uh, Danny Wagner will argue and assert his points to it, but he's sort of just uh, applying the George Carlin logic of watching the freak show happen in front of him. Well, yeah, but um, he's also at work. Danny Wagner goes. Danny Wagner and Manny Cole. Uh, have vaster, more personal experiences. Right? As you said, we don't see really Erica. We only hear about Erica. And, and uh, you know, in, in this book, Ben is the author of some of the plays that I've authored. Um, and, uh, uh, but we, you know. But I mean, until they actually revealed it, this is why I, it stacks up on each other. But as you're reading this book, and I'm only talking uh, my experience as I'm reading it, um, you don't really know whether or not he's a great writer until he's, you see the plays and you see the end of the show. Then it's undeniable. Well, then, but see, that's that's one of the things that Jessica was saying. Why did you put the, the uh, plays in there? Well, I said I wrote them at this time. Uh, but also, I, did, I do want to give the, the sense that uh, Ben is someone who isn't just bullshitting. He's not, he's not, I mean, we get Ben as the everyman. You know, every guy, I mean, you're gay, but Ben is straight and I'm straight. And every guy, like I said, there's three or four teachers that uh, uh, Ben says, you know, if I was single and 15 or 20 years younger, man, I could go for her. She's cute. And there's the one teacher that he thinks is cute, but has a too wide of a butt uh, and 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 whatnot. Um, and, and those are the kinds of things that make him relatable, that, that he's 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 talking about that. Uh, also relatable as other times when the, some of the teachers rag on him. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I think some of the, for me, some of my favorite scenes are when they're in the cafeteria waiting to punch out to go home. Most of the custodians get there 20, 30, 40 minutes early. They're done with their stuff. So they're waiting there. And either they're talking and bullshitting or some of them are on their cell phones just watching bullshit. And some of the more interesting moments, the the core moments, I think, happen. That's an interesting point you just mentioned. Why do you think that people are forced to do that in workaday life? You know, why why do they have to have a punch out system? It seems just a, a, an excruciating uh, amount of time is wasted uh, when they can just pay them for the eight hours, let them go. You increase the morale of your staff. Uh, but instead they force them to sit there for another 20 minutes. That punching in and out thing is just a evil on the working world. Uh, because they don't want them to, to have a better morale. Uh, you can control people by keeping them depressed. If people are happy, it's harder to keep them controlled because then they think, well, well not really, but management types think. They think that. Yeah, they, yeah. they think that. That if someone is I think, happy, I think they'll get it's too big for wrong. I think that um, if you have a happier staff, you'll have a very loyal staff too. You won't yeah. have to. There won't be as much turnover. You'll have people that stay there for years as long as they're satisfied. It's been proven in statistics that people feel more satisfied 
and in, in uh, just testimonies by getting them to do more, get the, getting them more active. Well, a happy uh, worker is a good worker, but here's the, yeah. here's, here's the thing that becomes the catch-22 is if you make a job too good, you're going to get better workers. And if you get better workers, then the management has competition because then there are workers that could be better management people. Uh, you know, there's a book and a famous idea called the Peter Principle, not named yeah. after you, but the idea that that people rise to a level of incompetence. And one of the things that, that all organizations, be they employment organizations or political organizations or philosophical or religious or whatever organizations with humans is that the people in charge want to stay in charge. They want to be uh, in control and they don't want competition. They don't want someone pointing out their flaws or whatnot. Um, you know, one of the reasons, for example, that the Uptown Poetry Group, uh, just as a group, worked so well while so many other uh, poetry groups failed and bond was I did not I did not hold an authoritar authoritarian uh, fix over the group. I I was very the only thing that I ever insisted on was it was poetry first. It was, you know, I remember one time uh, a guy came when Bruce Area was there and he he had talked to me on the phone and said, you know, that he had uh, he, he, he had some mental issues or something. I said, well, I don't care as long as you bring the poem and you're ready to listen. And he came to the poem. He brought he brought a poem, the crying George Bush, the second uh, as a as an asshole and whatnot. And I told him it was a terrible poem. Everyone told him it was a terrible poem. And he's like, but I told you I had a mental illness. And I said, but I told you I don't care. Uh, it, that this is a poetry group. You're not here. You're not here for that. But that was the only time I ever put a hole on it. Other than that, uh, you know, the, and there was a time uh, when a guy came to the poetry group and he was harassing some of the women. And I, uh, I didn't stand up for him because I had uh, a, a couple of women come to the group who made false claims uh, about things or well, to other groups. And so I decided to, to be laissez-faire and, and you know, that, that brought on its own problems. But I always tried in that group to just let things go. But you can't do that in business uh, or, or they don't want to do that in business because then they don't have control and then they might get good workers and then they might have competition. And uh, I've seen that over and over again. Uh, the, the job where I currently work, I, I, I can give, I'm not going to go into it, but there are some people who are, are, are good workers uh, and they've left the, the place where we work because they're younger and they can get other jobs more easily. I'm sticking it out uh, and hopefully I can ride it out. But uh, that's just the way it is. Hopefully it's not as bad in Canada. <laughs>